All right, now joining us now in studio is the president of the World Native Identity Foundation, Dr. Charles Sincala, to give us his views on this story. Charles, this is a serious issue and a serious story. Uh, first of all, I'd like your personal opinion on, on how you view this, this story. Yeah, um, no, thank you very much and uh, good morning to you. Uh, it's a very sensitive uh, uh, case, uh, you know, and um, I'm with the view that uh, uh, we need to uh, make people understand the content and the concept of it. Um, it is, yes, a serious violation, it's a criminal offense, uh, but I have to, um, uh, to direct people or the public or to anybody to uh, refer to the Vienna uh, Convention mm -hmm. in 1961. Uh, which was agreed that uh, countries uh, have a relationship together, international relationship, bilateral relationship, and uh, section or article 31 clearly indicates that uh, 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 when a diplomat is appointed uh, by the uh, sending uh, uh, state or country, the receiving state uh, must uh, accord and make sure that uh, that uh, diplomat enjoys the immunity uh, from the jurisdictions of the prosecution of the Republic of that state where that uh, um, uh, 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 diplomat is assigned. And uh, one thing uh, which was agreed also in there that uh, uh, Section 29 clearly indicates as well that uh, uh, that cannot be viable, you know, it cannot, no one can violate that. And uh, also it indicated that the onus is on the countries, uh, the one sending that diplomat to the country to make sure that uh, uh, they give training and they give uh, also moral support and that these uh, ambassadors or diplomats, they conduct themselves in a manner which is more like the word itself, diplomat, like they call yourself uh, a honorable, you must have that conduct. You should not have uh, uh, means and ways to indulge yourself into unnecessary activities. What does the Vienna Convention then say when it comes to issues of what is alleged in this particular incident where there is, uh, you know, a, a criminal element, so to speak? I mean, assault at the end of the day is, 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 a, is a criminal element. Surely the Vienna Convention cannot uh, um, allow, uh, you know, whether you're a diplomat or not, uh, for you to go into another country, can, you know, commit a crime and then sort of get away with it. What are the sort of guidelines in the Vienna Convention it's, itself and, and how how, how stringently are these rules followed within uh, the Vienna Conventions by those countries that are signatories uh, to, to it? Yeah, look, uh, there is limitations into the Vienna Convention. One of the limitations is that uh, uh, one cannot commit uh, a criminal offence or in, uh, subject to, to a civil um, uh, offence or crime uh, for something which is not attracting an imprisonment of more than five years. But again, the same convention restricts itself from um, uh, 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 involving itself because there's only three ways the way uh, any prosecution can be uh, conducted. One is by the sending a state or country uh, to declare uh, a persona non fundata uh, um, uh, to, uh, to expel uh, this individual uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from that privileges immunity, I mean, uh, uh, diplomatic immunities and privileges. Uh, and uh, once they expel, uh, the second stage is to uh, recall that individual to their country. And uh, uh, in that process, on that process there, uh, then that's when, uh, you know, he may be also on the third can be prosecuted. But only the country, sending country, is the only one who can instigate uh, uh, after the immunity has been withdrawn from that individual. Uh, unfortunately, the receiving country cannot do anything. The only thing which they can do is by involving the international relation uh, with uh, the sending uh, country uh, to say that you are, one of your members is in violation of uh, our agreement, our convention, that the, one of your members or diplomat has been involved into a criminal offense. Mm. We want you to, uh, to, uh, to remove the immunity and the uh, start proceeding on prosecution because it's a criminal offense. A criminal offense is a criminal offense wherever you have. And uh, unfortunately, uh, these privileges have been abused. We have been having a lot of uh, uh, scandals around the world where uh, the diplomats have abused some, they've been right. drug trafficking and all sorts of things. Uh, I'll give you an example, Judge Regotti in the High Court of Johannesburg in, uh, in June uh, 2015 
uh, he wrote, there was a diplomat from the Development Bank of Zambia, uh, where uh, one of the, uh, the spouses was uh, requesting maintenance. So the judge ruled that he cannot, uh, he does not have jurisdiction to hear that case. So the process, one, the sending country must remove the immunity mm -hmm. for that person to be exposed to prosecution. And that's when the prosecution can be. Uh, but very, it's very disappointing and, uh, you know, and discouraging that uh, uh, because of this fear for bilateral relations, none of these cases are persuaded. And uh, um, it is uh, up to the, the public, you know, to like what Afri Forum has taken the step. Yeah, yeah I think to, you anticipated yeah. my next question. So yeah. uh, you would have seen uh, Afri Forum is pushing for some sort of uh, prosecution of, of, of Grace uh, Mugabe. Uh, that, of, of course, is uh, the contention that, uh, you know, the, the, the abuse by diplom uh, diplomats sort of uh, abuse that, uh, that immunity. How far really can a lobby group like uh, Afri Forum go uh, in terms of um, getting their way in terms of prosecution uh, for the former first lady? Yeah, um, the only uh, distance they can go is by trying to put pressure onto the, uh, the Ministry of International Relations uh, to contact the sending um, uh, uh, country, in this case uh, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. to engage with them that this is not what we agreed, that uh, you send officials or ambassadors or, or diplomats who accord themselves into, you know, Having a diplomatic immunity or uh, uh, privileges is not a, 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 a license for violation for crimes and other activities. You are presenting the, the, you're an ambassador of that country. So the, the provisions of just giving you that privileges and immunity is just deters you from unnecessary searching or whatever, you know, just to accord that country, that bilateral relationship, uh, uh, la po. Uh, so that's the only extent they can do. Otherwise, if Zimbabwe, because of the, the interest of, uh, her, of her status of being uh, the first, uh, former first lady, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little bit very complicated. It's a little bit very complicated. They can also start from the uh, receiving uh, side of the South African government and national relations. Also, they can go into that uh, country's jurisdiction and institute uh, um, a case you know, within the country, uh, Zimbabwe, to, so that the immunity can be withdrawn, so that once the immunity is withdrawn from uh, uh, Grace Mugabe, then she may be uh, uh, prosecuted. Now, Grace Mugabe obviously has one of the best teams, um, you know, she can possibly work with. What do you think her next move will be? Uh, sorry, I beg yours? What do you think Grace Mugabe's and her lawyers, what, what will be their next move? Uh, their move is to protect the immunity which she uh, enjoys, you know. So um, uh, unfortunately, they, they don't have so much uh, uh, rope to run around as there is conditions for the issuance of those diplomatic uh, immunity and privileges that one uh, diplomat must accord the respect and go be, uh, within those guidelines. And uh, they will fight it that they protect. But again, you know, looking at the matter of the incident, the way it happened, I mean, no one can ever forgive uh, a very senior uh, a first lady of the country, you know, whatever her provocation, which was uh, during that time, uh, to lay a hand on somebody into that matter. You know, there are channels where she was supposed to exercise mm. uh, a situation or co make a complaint mm -hmm. as a diplomat or whatever of our status that they were violated within the receiving country, which is South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, rather than, uh, uh, you know, inflicting, uh, actually that case should be actually attempted murder because uh, uh, that uh, a child should have collapsed because of uh, the excessive bleeding or the, the inflicted wounds on that. So it's a very serious uh, mm -hmm. criminal offense. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, murder cannot be substituted by uh, diplomatic immunity. Uh, we also saw a another example by the Al Bashir, the Sudanese president, who the South African government could not do anything because if they intervened, they should have been in violation of the 1961 uh, Vienna Convention you know, where they have to uh, accord status. Only the sending country is supposed to remove the immunity, then that's when South African government can take uh, prosecution.
All right. Uh, thank you very much for giving us your time. So that's uh, President of the World Native Identity Foundation, uh, Dr. Charles Sinkala, giving us our views uh, there.